Hey everyone, Gaijin Goombi here. First of all, I wanted to apologize for the lack of content lately. Christmas and New Year's really took its toll on me time-wise, and I just got back from MAGFest a few days back. Big thanks to you guys who came out and saw me. Second of all, the other reason why I've been kinda light on content over the last two weeks is because I'm working on a good number of collaborative videos with some people you may have heard of. Joey the Anime Man, Masako X, Takahata 101, and a few others. As I said a while back, I want to expand more and more into anime on top of gaming since the two run so closely together, so starting later this month, I hope to culturally tackle some new topics for you guys. But for now, we're going to be talking about the Switch, because good lord, I have not seen so much optimism for anything Nintendo in such a long time, and I honestly love it. Being 32, Nintendo already has my childhood by the balls, and it's never going to let it go. But beyond that, I want Nintendo to get back on top in the eyes of consumers, because Nintendo, in my opinion, is critical for gaming. Sony president Shuhei Yoshida said it best, quote, We need Nintendo to be very successful to help induct as many consumers who like to play video games with controllers. So everything we could have ever wanted to know about the Switch has rolled out, and granted, we already knew that the system was made for portability. In what little we got to see from it, the system was shown off in a mobile setting more than a home setting, and that got me thinking. Why is Nintendo making this move to an all-in-one portable system? I mean, you'd think they'd be killing it still with the 3DS, right? Well, after some thinking, I came to a conclusion that many of you may either find shocking or straight up disbelief. However, I think that as far as Nintendo's domestic market is concerned, the ultimate portability of the Switch is a reaction to the theoretical biggest competitor, the Vita. Oh, trust me, I know. I know 95% of you are looking at the screen with crooked eyebrows, grimace faces, and really tempted to turn off this video. But seriously, hear me out on this one. I know many of you want to say that the Switch's main competition should be the PS4 or Xbox One, and when it comes to the US, I believe that's likely the case, but for this video, I'm addressing Japan's domestic market. You know, what many people believe to be Nintendo and Sony's lifeblood. And Japan's domestic market is always on the move. Seriously, the amount of time spent at home in Japan isn't as much as you'd like to believe, and because of that, the mobile market in Japan is a big, big deal. Remember, even in the prime of the 3DS, Nintendo was fighting the uprising of mobile phone games. Now, I will not deny for a moment that the Vita died in the US a long, long time ago. That is unmistakable. The expectations of graphical capabilities created a huge strain on financing games for the system, which ultimately led to its downfall. Basically, it was really expensive to make games for the Vita that met the expectations of what the machine could produce visually. Instead, over in the US, the 3DS dominated and continues to dominate the handheld market even though the graphics of the system aren't great. Still good, but not nearly what the Vita can put out. But here's the thing, guys. The Vita is still very, very much alive and kicking when it comes to Sony and Nintendo's domestic market of Japan. And the reason why it's doing so well is exactly why it failed in the US. See, when it comes to Japan, presentation is king. Food, clothing, movies, TV shows, even games follow the formula of make it pretty first, then make everything else come after it. Granted, sometimes overcomplicating presentation can lead to a game's downfall like the original Final Fantasy XIV, but by and large when it comes to Japan's domestic gaming, the mechanics of gameplay could be bare bones or worse, but so long as it's visually appealing, people will buy it. And that's what brings me to the Vita. This system produces the most beautiful graphics than any other handheld on the market. It's crisp, it's sharp, and its capacity for HD imagery is second to none. The 3DS, on the other hand, not so much. Let me put it this way, in the two years I've lived in Japan, and the two times visiting there since having moved back to the US, I've seen a 3DS used in public once. Once. Every other time, it was a Vita. Here's the other thing too. By having a less powerful portable system, Nintendo has by and large ignored one of Japan's biggest domestic demographics, otaku. Parents may be a big driving force when it comes to buying games for kids, but nothing compared to the financial driving power of the otaku and neat demographics in Japan. These are the folks that will devote their dollar to their favorite anime or established game franchise regardless of how they're living. And it's not Nintendo, but Sony that has the biggest of big names when it comes to popular mobile console games nowadays. Guide Eater, Mobile Suit Gundam Extreme vs. Force, Gundam Breaker, Gravity Rush, Final Fantasy X and X2, J-Star's Victory vs., Dragon Quest Heroes 2, Sengoku Basada, Odin Sphere, Dynasty Warriors and Samurai Warriors, one of Japan's biggest names in gaming right now, Kantai Collection, and not to mention every big hitting anime adaptation ever, and every visual novel you could ever want. 
These are Japan's essentials when it comes to not just mobile gaming, but gaming in general. Nintendo systems can't match that visual output that the Vita can, and when it comes to Japan's domestic games, presentation is everything. That's why if you ever watch anime, you notice 9 times out of 10 when a character is playing a video game, it's a Vita. Sony has the otaku market by the balls, and I think Nintendo knows this. I mean, have a look at the 4 gamers' top ranking consoles sold in May of 2016. The Vita is in 2nd place, only behind the PS4, and the new 3DS is in 5th place. 5th place! It did worse than the Wii U for crying out loud. So while the Vita has been dominating the handheld market versus Nintendo's less powerful 3DS in Japan, I think Nintendo may have been thinking about how to overtake the Vita when it comes to the all-powerful platform of mobile gaming in the country. And the best way to do it? An all-in-one system. A while back, Arlo did a video talking about the incredible benefits of having an HD system act as both a home and mobile console, and I highly suggest you watch it. But the point that he makes is that to have your next-gen console be playable in any facet of gaming gives you an incredible edge over your competition who's still making customers pay for two different systems, a home and a mobile console. If Nintendo can give its mature audiences the graphics and games they demand and make them completely portable for the sake of Japan's always-on-the-move society, I could easily see the Switch dominating the Vita and even the PS4 in Japan. It's an all-in-one system that would allow you to play the most modern games with the most modern graphics anywhere you want to be. That's something that Sony can't offer between the PS4 and the Vita. Granted, the PS4 Remote Play feature does come pretty close to allowing you to play home console games on a mobile device, but you're still confined to your home. The Switch obliterates that limitation and lets you play not only anywhere you want, but caters to multiplayer games anywhere you want to be without buying a second system. But what do you guys think? Am I crazy? Is Nintendo really at odds with Sony when it comes to the mobile market and the Switch is their solution? Let me know in the comments below and stay tuned next week for the return of the channel for 2017. A big thank you to my patrons who have been so lovingly supportive of the show and a big thank you to all of you for watching. If you're a fan of learning about the world through video games and anime, be sure to subscribe to my channel to never miss a single new upload. But if you're looking for more culture and gaming, click those annotations and links in the description for even more videos. And until next time everyone, this is Gaijin Goomba, signing out.